Agnes up there. Okay, we got to put Agnes up there for a minute because you're not supposed to be on yet, but you're dancing so well. Let's go. <laughs> Woo, we got Philippines in the house inspiring us. Yay! All right. All right. We'll get you right back, Agnes. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Can't get him to be quiet. We couldn't get him to be quiet. Hi, Baba. <laughs> hey, all Tanya and everyone who is joining us today. And it's I am fast. The interest in this particular podcast around type two diabetes is about quadrupled any of the ones that we've done. And it's funny because um, I think that we usually get much more airplay. Uh, after, you know, the recordings. And there's a whole inventory. If you guys are coming on board and you want to hear, this is episode 12. So we have three months of really exciting topics. And, um, but this one had over 900 uh, click-throughs and interest in them. Wow, when usually that's it's great. only about 150. So that's amazing. It's great. Well, the first thing I have to do is say, Boy, Vivi, you're looking very different tonight. <laughs> um, I don't have that fabulous hairdo that Vivi has, but yeah, yes. I know, I know, and the eyebrows and, and just her, <laughs> I miss her so much, but she uh, had a family commitment that she could not get out of tonight. And as we know, all of us who work with IQMK Global, who work with health and certainly who work on our Muscadine Global team, Family and work are syn synonymous with priority. And uh, she sends her love, and she'll be back next week. Um, and uh, that will be fantastic. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about immune system and immune health. So it's going to be a powerful, powerful topic as well. Um, our CEO, Mike Asgari, doesn't know, but he's going to be one of our guests, along with a clinical person, to talk about um, keeping our immune system strong and healthy in this time of, you know, viral threats. All right. So without further ado, I think we're going to talk immediately to our guest who it is brand spanking morning in the Philippines. And I know that um, our guest tonight is Agnes Anguito. Um, and she is a nurse practitioner. And I'm going to let her give a little bit of her background because she sent me a bio that is really uh, worthy of, um, you know, a university hall of fame, but I wanted her to give a little introduction to herself. And we're going to be talking about a couple of things. And that is what is type two diabetes? What do we think it is? And what is it really? And um, what are some of the traditional approaches to diabetes? And then what are some of the natural approaches to diabetes? And, you know, with all transparency, um, the three of us that are talking to you tonight have all experienced transformative health with the muscadine grape. And I'm going to emphasize that again, transformative health with the muscadine grape. And it, uh, you know, diabetes is a systemic disease and there's nothing, nothing that transforms the systems of health like powerful antioxidants. So let me introduce a powerful antioxidant right now. <laughs> Her <laughs> name is Agnes and Guito. Welcome. Welcome, Agnes. Good day. I'm from the Philippines. I'm Agnes Jean Guito, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing graduate uh, with Master's Degree in Nursing. Uh, coined with a master in management and completed the landmark education courses. Uh, it is also uh, a specialty that brings together my passion for science and my love of the universe. I am a nursing leader and educator and a practitioner and served as a director of the Philippine National Red Cross. I am really honored to be here with great ladies 
Tanya, my girl, and Dr. Alba. Hello, Phoebe. <laughs> Wherever Phoebe is. Yes, I know. And she'll watch this because this is important to her. Diabetes runs in her family, so she uh, is not here. Well, you know what? I have to say this. I know that the very first country that helped us really, really establish must natural as an adjunct to improved health was the Philippines. And the one thing that you did not say in your introduction is that you are a leading eye partner of IQMK Global and Must Natural in the Philippines. So you are an inspiration to me and I really appreciate you giving us your time tonight. Thank you. And I want to, I just, I'm starting to see the people who are gathered. We have um, our newest um, stockist uh, as we set up our uh, business structure in Ghana. I am just back 24 hours from Accra, Ghana. And Kofi, you're on for us. And I just want to say hi. Um, he uh, is representing um, he, he actually manufactures antioxidant juices and I oh, ended wow. up at his restaurant drinking hibiscus and, um, uh, leaves from the, not the sorrel plant. Uh oh, you have to write in the, oh, I'm so sorry, Kofi. It wasn't sorrel. It was, you write it down so I can tell everybody later, but it's in a most amazing uh, source of energy and antioxidants because I want to start this story with a little story. I went to Ghana um, for a week. It was way too fast. A beautiful country. I was in the city of Accra, but got a little bit out to the suburbs. We went with Mus Music. And we went, of course, with Kino and Big Mountain. Had a wonderful time. And I brought four bottles of Mus Natural and one bottle of extract. And as most of you know that continually listen to our podcast, Mus Natural transformed um, my health. But most importantly, I was a few days out from having lamectomy on my back because I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand without canes. Um, and um, it also uh, resulted in a near reversal of my type 2 diabetes. Uh, in seven months, I went from a 12.8 A1C and insulin and other drugs to a 6.6 .6 just last wow. week. Um, so I am just, uh, you know, I'm a bubbler about this. <laughs> and of course, when I met Kofi, um, we talked and I gave him a bottle, but what Kofi didn't know is that was my last bottle. And so for the next three days, I had no must natural and I didn't want to take the 12 pills that I saw Kino had left, but I had given all my samples because I forgot how passionate I am about this, and I just gave it all away. And I said, you know what? If I keep drinking Kofi's antioxidant drinks, but they weren't enough. And I ha I'm sad to say that I have such swelling um, after my 14-hour flight, um, and I have a little bit of sciatica and knee pain. And I came back, and I am one day, 24 hours back home, and I've taken about 12 tablets and a couple of um, shots <laughs> of the extract. And uh, my knees aren't hurting, uh, but the swelling is still there. And I just want to say with all my heart that this muscadine grape effect is real, so real that I put my entire healthcare reputation on the line. And I'll do it again mm -hmm. because I went without it for three days and put trauma, stress trauma on my body by traveling. And I suffered, I suffered the consequences of not have giving away five bottles and not keeping one for myself. So Kofi, yours is extra special, um, must natural. <laughs> and it is soursop. Thank you, Kofi. It was soursop. I needed to probably drink six of those a day. So yeah, and we, and we all know how traveling up in an airplane affects us, increases our free radicals from all that radiation and lack of sleep and everything else that's going on. So it's a good time to get extra antioxidants if you're traveling. Absolutely. And what, um, 
uh, Agnes doesn't know, or maybe you do, I think you've met Dr. Elba before. Um, she's a neuroscientist, one of those very smart brain people. And uh, she, <laughs> in her own career, uh, did extensive research and study on antioxidants, particularly grapeseed and uh, brain cancer cells. Crazy. And then all these years later, we find a company that really wants to change the wellness um, equation of the world with that simple substance. Um, today, um, uh, there's just new research and another new clinical trial with prostate cancer. I see that uh, Darwin, you shared that today. Um, very powerful. We need to let men know, not only does it treat cancer of the prostate in its earliest stages, but guys, it prevents it. The research is there. It's science. I mean, it's amazing. So um, let's believe in, in nature. Let's believe in nature as medicine. All right. Um, Agnes, can we start a little bit with you? And, uh, and, and can you tell us a little bit about diabetes is an interest of yours. Is diabetes as widespread a problem in the Philippines as it is here in the United States? Yes. Actually, diabetes happens when our body is not able to take up glucose or the blood sugar into the cells. Um, it is because of a weak pancreas. The pancreas is an organ where the main work is to reproduce our body's natural insulin. And the natural insulin is the regulator of the right level of glucose in our body. So then, why did you get diabetes? Because diabetes comes from eating. Our pancreas can only take or break down one much box of meat in a day. But with this profession of buffet restaurants and this unlimited samgyup, do you know the samgyup? That's the Korean. It's really all over the places. We tend to eat five pieces, 25 pieces of meat, slices. As time goes by, our dear pancreas will get tired. And so it's dry. And I'm going to, and you gave the right, I mean, you gave the medical answer and, but I will tell you that most Americans, most Americans don't really understand the nature of diabetes. We're told it's because you're too fat. We're told it's because you eat badly. We're told that it's because you don't exercise, but those are contributors to something. The true nature of type 2 diabetes is what you just said. It is the failure of our pancreas, and more specifically, the failure of the cells of the pancreas and the cells of the body to pick up insulin and um, process sugars, correct? I'm going to put yeah. up one second. I'm going to put up a, a screenshot for all of us to look at um, because it's a very interesting, very simple diagram for diabetes. And I think it's important for us all to understand this because most of us, um, Agnes, are not clinicians. I've been a, um, I guess I'm called a women's health evangelist, but I've been working at hospitals and in physician practices over 30 years, helping break down science for women and helping them find the hospitals and the doctors that will work with them. So I've had to find simple ways to break things down. And I really like this diagram. If you go right up to the top, it, this is it. This is what all animals live for. We're an animal. We eat food. And then having eaten food and it going into our gut, it goes to this organ that's near our liver, which is called the pancreas. And what happens is the amount of sugar or carbohydrates, and I need people to really understand, you can be diabetic and not, I never ate candy or white sugar. I, as a matter of fact, was kind of vegetarian all my life as this developed, but I ate a whole lot of carbs and not protein. So I ate a whole lot of things that turn into sugar and your body doesn't, it doesn't know the difference between, it just turns it all into glucose, whether it's bread, or whether it's a Hershey's bar. So don't get those confused. Things that turn into glucose, things that are processed carbs will be contribute to insulin resistance. So here's what happens. 
it goes to this organ. It's a funny looking organ and it makes insulin. Insulin is then released into your body, into the cells. Healthy cells pick up the insulin. Okay. They pick up the insulin and they take the sugar and they break it down and they feed your muscles. They feed your organs with carbohydrates. And that's a healthy thing. And you eat just enough to let that happen every day. And that's where you get energy, all right? But what happens is as Agnes said, you eat too much of that Filipino carbohydrate or here you eat, you know, four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then you, cause no meal in the United States is complete without potatoes and a muffin or, or a bread. And after you get to be about 35, 40, that pancreas says, I'm tired. I'm just so tired. And then what happens? the sugar becomes stored because the body can't feed the organs. So it says, okay, what do I do with this? Let me just put it in the fat. And the fat begins to form and fat is just sweet blubber. That's one way that you can look at it. <laughs> and it doesn't do anything except when your body feels tired and it's not nourished because it's not, doesn't have the energy of the carbs and wham, what do you do? You go and you eat more food and because your body's craving carbs because it's not getting the sugar, you end up eating more of the crap that caused the breakdown of your pancreas. So this is really, I think, a powerful diagram. And, and, but what most doctors do after your pancreas over here breaks down, they just decide to give you oral drugs, right? that increase the sensitivity of the cells, but doesn't heal anything, right? So you keep taking these drugs and then your diabetes gets worse in five years. And does anybody know, you guys are talking over on the side, what happens? Then you start having to inject insulin because your pancreas is too tired and it cannot make enough. So you need to inject insulin. Insulin breaks down the cells of your kidneys, which is why so many diabetics have to have, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, doc, what's that called? When you have to have your, your kidneys um, cleaned. Um, dialysis? Dialysis, right? And so it's a vicious cycle until all the cells of your organs break down. And so honestly, most people think medicines reverse diabetes. It doesn't. It just kind of slows down the the progression. So tonight we're here to talk about, okay, you have medicines. I was on everything. <laughs> I was on everything and I couldn't get my A1C below nine. And I used to be 340 pounds, right? I lost 120 of that. That was 30 years ago, 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. That didn't kill my diabetes, right? I'm a very active person. People can't keep up with me. That didn't kill my diabetes. The truth is my pancreas needed to be healed. And what happened was what I think Agnes is going to help us understand. So Agnes, what are some natural approaches to healing the pancreas and reversing type two diabetes? Uh Oh, I think you're on you? mute. You're on mute, Agnes. There you go. Yes. When I was really a practicing nurse, I have been a uh, I have been an ICU nurse for 23 years. I have been very strict in following the blood, uh, you know, uh, extraction and, you know, to follow the, the, this synthetic drugs, the synthetic drugs, he's making you sick every day because the moment the patient take the synthetic drug, okay, it's, it controls the sugar. Then we are happy. Sugar, is controlled, but don't you realize the fake insulin will push and it creates the thickening or the vicious, like condensed milk, the blood will become thickened and, you know, it creates blood clots and it creates more problem in our body. Can you just imagine how deadly this, the effects of synthetic drugs um the, the the various diseases of the digestive tract 
usually diarrhea, heartburn, belching, and stomach ulcers. It also causes the hypertension when blood pressure suddenly rises. Especially at night, you may feel headaches, clogged ears, panic attacks, and deep fears. These are the results of the thickening of the blood. And you know, you don't know that as you go along, Eating all these synthetic drugs, we develop liver cirrhosis. The liver cells become connective tissue and lose their ability to cleanse the blood. And the result is that toxins fill the whole body. Kidney stones develop because of the excess salt and sugar in the blood are not excreted properly. So there are oncological diseases, blindness, and of course, early death due to damaged blood vessels. My father died because of these synthetic drugs at the age of 53 years old. My late husband died because of these synthetic drugs at 56 years old. I have been a widow. I mean, you know, because of these synthetic drugs who kill people. That is why I really challenge all those diabetic patients. Throw away all those the synthetic drugs and start with our muscadine therapy, you know? And I, I, I your passion, sweetheart, I, first of all, I wanna stop and say all that loss to health issues that are treated with drugs that alleviate the symptoms of the problem and not the underlying disease. Now, I will say, and I, and I need, because you know, we're in the United States and we have to be very careful about telling people to throw away drugs. But I will say this, I did not throw away my drugs, but what I did was I insisted to be tested monthly. And when my results, I would call Mike and say, it's nine, it's 10, you know, but, it's... and then the doctor then began saying, you know what, then just let's take you off of this. Let's take you off of um, uh, the insulin. That was first, right? And then the second thing they took me off was the Azempic pen. And then the third thing they took me off was another generic form of tablet until the last time I went and he said, you can go off of the metformin. But he said to me, I am not diabetic and I take metformin because as you age, the body has a harder time with glucose. And so I stayed on the metformin. But I would, I would and I have people with lupus, um, in my in my downline and they're managing their lupus very well um, and they slowly did the same things they went to the doctors and said I think these drugs are too much and the doctors helped them wean off um, and one of my actually both of them now are completely off of their painkillers and things but it takes time and we need to be we need to be cognizant of the fact that a muscadine works miracles, but for some of us, it works a lot faster than for others. So we just want to be gentle and we want to be respectful that sometimes modern medicine does have drugs that can carry through the transitions, but we can't believe that's the answer because our bodies heal naturally. You know, we have Dr. Asha, I don't know if she's on from Jamaica, because congratulations, Dr. Asha, you have one of the fastest growing teams in the world right there in Jamaica. Um, Jamaica, right? Jamaica loves natural, the idol lifestyle, right? Vegetarian. But, you know, they also believe that, you know, modern Western medicine might be a better solution. Not really. And, um, you know, muscadine has found a real home there for people that are battling high blood pressure, cholesterol, those things. And all of those things are the breakdown of our cells. I'm gonna ask Dr. Alba, because Dr. Alba, you just heard the things that Agnes said, and I know you have a lot of expertise around cellular breakdown and disease. Can you comment a little bit? Um, well, I was doing a lot of research when I, I was working at a major health system for about uh, oh, 12 years or so. And we were both in my graduate work and at this health system. We worked a lot on 
looking at diseases of aging, diseases of the brain, and how can we prevent these diseases? What are some of the common things that they have? And um, what can you do to help either prevent or reverse them? And one of the things that kind of they've been talking to us about ever since uh, you know I was in graduate school, for example, brain diseases, but this also applies to other things like many of these diseases of aging, like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes that we talk about, is um, the big role that oxidative stress plays in those diseases. I know a lot of us may not be exactly sure what oxidative stress is, but oxidative stress, it happens due to free radicals, and these are kind of um, molecules that are in the environment that are missing an electron, so they're unbalanced. And these uh, free radicals go around grabbing electrons from other cells in your body and wreaking damage. So they wreak this kind of uh, vicious cycle where it's oxidative stress and that causes um, inflammation. And, and it, they're calling that oxidative stress inflammation cycle in many places, kind of like this underlying theory of aging and disease. And I know that um, just like oxidative stress, and that's just an imbalance where you don't have enough antioxidants to handle all those free radicals that are causing damage in your system. Just like uh, oxidative stress is a problem with brain diseases that I studied, like Parkinson's and Huntington's disease, we know that it's also a big issue in diabetes. So what can we do um, ourselves kind of to help support our body in healing because our body's made to heal, right? That, uh, you know, we, we get medical care when it's not working right, but what can we do ourselves to help give our body the tools it needs to promote the healing and to prevent the breakdown? And that's kind of like what we like to talk to people about. So Agnes, what are some of the things that you recommend to people for diabetes as far as what can they provide for their bodies that will help them heal and help them recover? Okay. Uh, after uh, knowing muscadine grapes, actually, um, I've already choose the path that all my patients because I I, 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 ha, I give free um, medical appraisal for for all my patients since I'm an independent nurse practitioner so all my patients are now really focused on the muscadine therapy um, all the, the all the, the illness from from COVID, you know, I, I also would like to, to really uh, thank uh, Mike Asgari for giving us this opportunity. All our patients who are COVID uh, victims are now free from COVID and we, they are held after 10 days of the muscadine therapy. Um, now with the diabetes and all this cancer, I have now, actually I developed treatments for them. I developed you know, they follow this. The, the diabetes is a 90 days cycle to really get free from diabetes, to be really cured from diabetes. These cancer patients, they need 200 days. I even uh, challenge the type, you know, the, the, the uh, cancer, cancer, uh, cancer patients who are, who are really um, in their worst, um, cases and the day we only give 200 days so after knowing muscadine grapes i am really very faithful and very devoted and very loyal to really give this muscadine treatment i really get all the medication away and they should only take one muscapi in the morning to really prepare the, the you know the entrance of the capsules, then I give three capsules every eight hours regular. For the diabetics, it's really for 90 days. For the cancer patients, it's for 200 days. And for the COVID patients, it's only for 10 days. Mm -hmm. And, and I, 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 don't th I think it's, oh, sorry. Um, I wanted to interject something here because, you know, I know many of us are watching from other countries 
And yes. I, I'm firmly, firmly, my entire life, I've been in the U.S. healthcare system. And it is a very litigious system, meaning that people sue and there are people who actively look to hurt doctors and hospitals and make money because they know they can sue. It's a crazy world and it's just a mental conditioning that we have here. Because of that, our healthcare system, if it's not something that's in something called a formulary, it's not recommended. So for instance, the doctor, my surgeon for my back has now looked at my MRIs and said, the only explanation I have for the fact that your disc is no longer inflamed, that you, that you can walk, is the fact that you're on this muscadine. But I legally cannot give it to my patient. And so I am in a bind. I wish there was something I could do. And because of HIPAA, of course, he can't give me patient names. So it is a very... One second. It's... Sorry about that, dog. It's a very difficult day for him because he actually found some, a patient that was me that in three weeks I had no pain left. And in, uh, I guess it was like almost six months, I actually had the little bit of that movement away from my spine um, because there was no longer daily inflammation. And some of the exercises, actually, Dr. Alba has a micro exercise system called somatic functional therapy that as I was doing that, it moved the bone. So long story short, Agnes, if I were in the Philippines, my doctor would have been able to say, okay, here's my patient. And in three weeks, she had, she didn't need a lamectomy. And she's putting me out of business as a surgeon, but you know, it's, it's, it's cheaper and it's better for, for her in the long run, but we can't do that here. And we can't even begin to say things like muscadine can help with cancer, except for this kind of research that's coming out. And that's why people get tired of hearing my research. If you're on my Muscadine Global Facebook page, but without the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, without their research, we can't say anything. So today I can say that the National Cancer, uh, the Cancer Center for the NIH has said unequivocally that muscadine grape seed kills prostate cancer cells in humans. I can say that. But if I would have said that a year ago before that cancer trial came out, you know, Mike could have been fined. So we have to be very, very careful. But I know that in places like the Philippines, Mexico, uh, even Ghana, you know, Kofi Zan, and we're going to be opening up Ghana in a big way over the next couple of months, there is an embrace of natural medicine and the research that, that shows us. We can say too, right, COVID, um, the COVID virus, the SARS virus, and viruses in general are killed by grapeseed. The research was done out of Wake Forest. But we have to be careful, and I'm just... Those of us that are in America know what a drag it is, but it's also our reality. Well, and, and you know, what we did when I was working with a major health system, we were doing programs educating people on what they could do to improve their health. And what we always told them is talk with your doctors. Tell them, look, I want to improve my health. I want you to be a partner with me on this. As I improve my health, can you help me um, uh, modulate my medications because you know no doctor wants you to be on a bunch of diabetes medications if your blood sugar levels are going down and if your a1c is going down so talk to your doctor and ask them you know doctor this is what I'm doing and here's the research behind it you can you can even show them the research and say as my numbers improve can we keep an eye on them so that we can modulate the medications to be in line with where my health is? Uh, and that's one of the issues we had when, when we were teaching programs, we were teaching people how to de-stress because um, Agnes, I think you'd probably agree with me that that's a big factor in a lot of things, right? Stress. And that's one of the things that causes oxidative stress, but we also teach them how to eat healthy. And so when you start implementing these things and it's not just one thing, you know, muscadine is not going to cure your every illness, but you use these as tools to improve your health. You use antioxidants and it happens to be that 
Muscadine grapes are a great source of antioxidants. There's other antioxidants out there, like the juices that Tanya talked about. There's a lot of different tools we can use to improve our health. So it's not just one thing and that's the only thing there is, but use, you know, learn, learn about your health, learn about how things work and add these tools to your tool belt to improve your health and prevention. And I want to say, again, this whole idea of antioxidants, it's really, really critical. Um, it's been proven over and over again that antioxidants repair damaged cells and prevent premature aging of cells. Mm -hmm. That's the science. Repairs damaged cells, like your pancreas, mm -hmm. and prevents early aging, therefore preventing early onset of heart disease, uh, you know, and a whole myriad. So... I also, though, um, can I ask you, Dr. Alba, what was the statistic that you shared or we shared somehow? Is it 80 percent of all chronic disease uh, is caused by stress? Something like that? Well, at, at one point, there was a report that, um, you know, more than 90 percent of things for things that people seek health care for are stress related conditions. And so, you know, other than than, you know, getting hit by a semi-truck, which actually happened to me when I was 19. Um, but, you know, you got to figure that's that's a stressor. That's a major stressor. So we've got stressors in our life like trauma, like physical trauma. We've got emotional trauma. We've got all kinds of stressors, poor foods that we eat, toxins that we're exposed to in the environment. Those are all things that affect us. And so what we want to do is stay away from the ones we can stay away from, right? But the ones we can't stay away from, then we give our body a little extra support so that our bodies can do what they're made to do, which is to deal with those stressors. And we want to learn how to adapt successfully to those stressors because stress is not bad. It's your reaction to stress that can become pathological. So whether it's a physical, emotional, psychological, imagined stressor, all of those things can affect us. And, and, and we know that stress is a big um, part of uh, diabetes. The more stressed you are, the more likely your blood sugar is going to go up, the more likely you want to eat those carbs, you know, those comfort foods. That's where the quote goes, comfort foods. Um, so what are the tools that we can use to, to, to avoid that, we know exercise is a good tool, right? Both to decrease stress and both to help the uh, uh, insulin in our bodies work better. Um, what else, uh, Agnes, have you found with your patients that, that helps? Actually, uh, of course, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I am really fond of um, avocado, you know. Uh, it really gives, uh, you know, a full uh, feelings of uh, when the, the, the patient or, or an individual gets, uh, you know, hungry. Uh, avocado can really, is a very big help. I really don't recommend bread. Yeah. Because <laughs> we were thinking that if we'll, they will not eat rice because, you know, Philippines is a rice, you know, we mm -hmm. really eat rice. But they think that when they take bre bread, they are already, um, you know, preventing the the the, uh, the increase of their sugar. But definitely, I don't really recommend bread. So I'd rather have this banana and this uh, avocado, you know. But this yeah. time, I tried. I used to be two hundred eighty pounds. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at you. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. Every, every time you feel uh, the hunger. You take one capsule of muscadine grapes. Yeah. And, and you know how that works? Yes. I asked somebody about that. I asked somebody about that. When you take, and I, I was just talking to somebody that's in my downline, and I said, well, aren't you having great results? And they went, yeah, I guess. And I'm like, and, and they said, well, I, I said, how much are you taking? They said, two tablets when I remember, like, like I took one yesterday. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you don't eat like that. You eat when you're hungry and you eat nutritious foods and that's what keeps you healthy and not hungry. The antioxidant value of eating muscadine grapes means that you have to treat it as food and you have to eat it every four hours, six hours at the most, like you do with food. When I find, like I did in Ghana, that all of a sudden I just have to take two in the morning and then I, 
you're starving your body of its steady source of antioxidants. And antioxidants don't stay in your body. They're food. You urinate them. They go out in your feces. They're in your blood. So you have to keep filling up. Um, and But as we know, this muscadine must natural has this intense source. So what you just said is, is what I find too. If I can't get near food and I'm feeling kind of nauseous, hungry, I will take, I usually take two, but I will take one or two tablets and within 20 minutes, it's in your blood and your body says, oh, oh, wait a second, you have some nourishment, you're not gonna die. We can wait for our next meal. So I think in that way, it's a little bit of a weight management tool to take adequate antioxidants. Um, and it stopped, everyone tells me, uh, especially women, that it stops certain cravings. Like they suddenly they don't want chocolate as much. So I, I find that hard to believe because I always want chocolate, but um, <laughs> this is an antioxidant, Mike told me. So just well, actually, yeah, it. especially that dark chocolate has a lot of antioxidants, lots of great research with dark chocolate. We, it's all the sugar and stuff they add to it. But if you can get yourself right. a nice dark chocolate that's low in sugar, that's awesome. Now, yeah. Agnes, you're using this as a big part of your clinical practice, and that is really cool. And we find more and more we have nurses and um, doctors and others that are that are trying to integrate it, too, and integrate it not as like a vitamin, but really as a food supplement. Like just a doctor will say, eat more vegetables and fruits. I want the doctor to say, hey, look, I know you don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, so take these. That's that's what I want the medical system in America to do. I think the, the problem is, you know, they tell you eat fruits and vegetables, but to get enough antioxidants, one, a lot of our fruits and vegetables are grown in depleted soils, so they don't have the nutritional value. A lot of them are genetically modified, you know, so, but even if you got some good organic fruits and vegetables, how much do you have to eat to get all those antioxidants? You know, you, sometimes you can be eating all day long and, you know, and, and again, you have to look at what, what is the, the oxidative issues that you have going on. If you are under a lot of stress, again, whether it's physical, or whatever, your needs for antioxidants increase, right? If you're under less stress, you don't need quite as much. So that's something that you can regulate kind of easily with what you take into your body. I know, you know, Tanya, like she said, she was traveling. That's a big stressor. That's when her body needs more antioxidants. If you're going through you know, an illness, a disease, a family crisis. If you're on lockdown, you know, your body needs more antioxidants. So there are there are some ways that are more efficient to get them than others. And muscadine is a very efficient source of antioxidants, but not only antioxidants, things like um, the, the muscadine grape is very high in resveratrol. I was just reading an article about how resveratrol um, increases sodium superoxide dismutase in cells, and that's a huge antioxidant. So it, it works in a lot of different ways, um, but that's a, a very protective thing for your cells. It stops cell proliferation. So cell proliferation is what happens like with cancer. It's, it's a good way that stops that. It also is protective of your normal cells. So those are things that, that we wanna think about. When you're really under stress, that's a great time to make sure you've got extra antioxidants in your system. And, and um, the more natural, the closer to the natural food source as possible, the better. Yeah, it's funny. I just, I, um, I had somebody, you know, and for, for those of you that are on the call that are not eye partners, um, eye partners is an expression that we use in the IQMK global family, or those of us who educate people about antioxidants and the muscadine grape as being the premier source of uh, over a hundred polyphenols um, that help our body. Um, if you're not involved in our network, I'm happy to talk to you because we are network marketing. We share that vision. But um, what's powerful about what we do is that all we have to do is explain to people that this is an insurance policy because you eat badly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, there are so few people that say, oh, I am sure that I get enough A, C, E, resveratrol in my days. Because if you did, you'd probably be eating more calories than you need. 
and or eating all the time of fruits and berries and green vegetables. And it, you just wouldn't be able to have a normal life. And I think that maybe a hundred years ago when there was a lot less toxins in the environment and a lot less stress in our lives, it might've worked, but it doesn't anymore. And people are now, there's an antioxidant measurement. Um, some say you can do it through saliva, but a lot of people do it through blood. You can actually go and test the amount of circulating antioxidants in your body. And I want, to, I want to do that because I want to be able to, you know, I've become a scientist since I started uh, promoting this because all of my old conservative friends will say, Tanya, are you sure about this? You know, doctors and nurses. And I tell them I am. And then they start taking it because I do my research. So I would really like to do that. I'd like to take my blood, not be on muscadine for four days, go into pain, go into inflammation, have my blood tested, and then have it tested again after I'm back on. Because I really think that the circulating, um, the circulating antioxidants is demonstrable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to talk a little bit, um, Agnes, because one of the greatest stressors in the United States right now, and certainly around the world, is poverty. <laughs> um, is, and for some of us, poverty is not having the money to buy the big screen TV. For others, poverty is not enough money to buy a bike so that we can go to the market once a week. And fortunately, God has blessed me enough that I've been around the world and lived in all those cultures where poverty means different things. But you know what? It's a stress. Not having enough is a huge stress. Yes. And when I was introduced to muscadine, I said to myself, oh, I'm never joining an M Kino. I'll buy this from you once. Mike, you're a nice guy, but I'm not getting involved because I just that that's just not for me. But now almost nine, ten months later, I watch this business, even on small levels, of someone making five hundred dollars an extra a month in Mexico change lives to someone making five thousand extra a month here. Or in the Philippines, you guys are doing better than most of my most of my Americans at this point because you know we're just revving up here. How did you become successful? Like, like, what's? How do you? You know, obviously, you're so passionate and you're a clinician, so it's a lot easier for you to enroll people. But what's the success to your business? What makes you a leader in this business and 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 growing your downline? Actually, the first. Uh... I I talk with hospital owners. I involve the doctors. And I really give, you know, a little conference for the doctors. And I apply for a continuing education unit so that the doctors will attend the seminar. Then they will be educated about the muscadine grapes. Where's showing our... I'm so very conceited in showing the, 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 the PubMed, the clinical trials, the scientific research. And, you know, that we involve doctors. That is why I am very brave to tell them, you know, it's a crime to prescribe medications that makes people, you know, that kills people. That is why some doctors just say, oh, Agnes. You're very, you know, because I challenge them. Okay, do you have a patient that got killed after taking that, you know, that medication? Okay, I will challenge you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the factory mm -hmm. of that, you know, I even challenge them because mm -hmm. I know that nobody got healed because of that fake insulin producer. You know? yeah. And once again, I want to stress that the reason drugs were invented was to get some person from a point of sickness to a point where they didn't need it anymore. But somehow in the Western paradigm of medicine, it's you stay on this for the rest of your life. And it, it's, not, it's not a transformational thing. Where when yes. we look at nature's medicine, it sometimes doesn't alleviate the symptoms as fast as like a painkiller, but what it does is it alleviates slowly and permanently the inflammation that causes pain in our backs, that cause cancer proliferation, 
It caused a whole series of degenerative and often fatal disease. That's fascinating. One thing that no one's talked about though is sleep. Um, uh, sleep is really important. I'm about 48 hours without more than two hours of sleep. <laughs> Tanya's doing exactly what we're not supposed to do. Yes, I'm sleeping my muscadine. I'm not sleeping, but um, no, I. But now, but having had this experience with not getting enough rest and not taking my muscadine at the proper quantities for four days, when I was going, you know, under travel and lots of different things, it it, it messes with you, and you just have to sleep and eat muscadine, and your life. I mean, I feel like some kind of weird cultist, but <laughs> I do, I do. But that's why, and, and people get, you know, people think I'm the, I, I love research. You knew me before Muscadine. Was I a research person? Dr. Alba? <laughs> Not that I knew. Oh, you were a, a, a healthcare marketing yes. and health, women's health evangelist. <laughs> right. And so research wasn't that important, but now because this has done such amazing things for so many people. Kino's on the line and he's the one that Hi, Kino. introduced me to this. You know, it, it's like, I can't just go and tell people all this magic stuff that's happened. Like my hair's replaced, my skin looks better. They're really gonna think I'm crazy. So instead of doing that, I talk about having a book of research for them and that it is the best a supplement, a food supplement that I've ever, ever eaten. And, uh, and it's the truth. It's the and the truth. great thing is you don't have to take Tanya's word for it. You don't have to take my word for it. You can actually go online yourself to pubmed.gov, P-U-B-M-E-D dot G-O-V. And that is the website where you can look for the research for yourself. Now, Tanya posts a lot of this research, so you can find it there too. Just go on pubmed.gov and put in the word muscadine and cancer, or muscadine or grape seed and cancer, or grape seed. Yeah, but but um, because there's a lot of more research on just general grape seed. But even if you look specifically at muscadine, you'll find well even better results. But you know, again, it's it's all out there in the research, and you you want to look at that for yourself. You know, don't just take somebody else's word for it. Go and look at the research and see what does grapes, what, what are the benefits of grapes? What are the benefits of the skin of grapes? What are the benefits of the seeds of grapes? What are the benefits of real foods like grapes, right? And I want research. to address people. Uh, I want to ask people, and Mike, if you're still on, please confirm this. Um, the team and through much sorting through amazing materials from the Philippines. Oh, I can't wait till COVID goes away and I can come visit you guys. I, you know, you really have been inspirational to me over the past nine months, but uh, we took materials from the most successful people with muscadine, um, starting at the top with Mike and Lynette um, and, and, and Charles, and then going to our Philippine colleagues and we put some training materials together. And the one thing that's up, uh, if you go to your back office uh, and you go and there's marketing and training materials. And if you click on that, Mike, am I correct? Um, the uh, product presentation will come up. The product presentation has a lot of research in it and a lot of um, guidance for how do we talk to even a doctor about this so that we get their support um so please you can visit that as long as there's other materials there too but i think the product presentation uh, will be added to and then i i will be remiss january 13th through the 15th we are having an a, a national and international meeting it'll be the first major one uh here in the united states uh, in Orlando, steps from Disney and Universal. Um, if you go to www.iqmkevents, so I'll put that up right now, www.iqmkevents.com, 
you will see our annual meeting. And what's cool about that meeting is that we will do science. With the very first day, don't be bored, you will get a certificate uh, that you've been clinically trained in the power of antioxidants. So it's not just must natural, it's the whole realm of antioxidants. And uh, we will be also sharing that research uh, on a, UA, a USB so that if you want to plug it into your computer, download that all into a zip file. Anytime you want links to things about cancer or um, you know cardiovascular risk, it'll all be there for you. Because first and foremost, we're not selling something we have to market. People just have to try this for themselves and they have to do their own research. So please don't forget to come to our conference. And if you register now, Yes, Orlando, Darwin, you have to come and the COVID's going to be gone. I, I, I will. I'm personally going to ensure that it's gone, <laughs> um, but uh, it'll be great. And I and I now so we'll have who knows what other country. Ghana is just such a wonderful surprise. I had and I say this with all due respect to Ghana. I had no idea it was so sophisticated, you know? I just didn't. And it is an amazing country with lots of science, great doctors, great natural approaches. You know, Jamaica is rocking. Dr. Asha Bjorn Lee, our, our very first day that we announced him, he's on our podcast tonight. We hope, I know visas are sometimes a problem, We'll do what we can, but we really want to see as many faces as possible at that meeting because we are going to talk science, right? We are also going to talk entrepreneurial models for success and really how to work and play this game to win. And then my favorite, and Agnes, you know what Landmark is. Our Saturday is going to be devoted to personal development and speakers that can shift your life. And then you go poolside and enjoy the universe. But it's a new year, guys. What the world has been through the past two years is unprecedented. It's time for us to take a bold, courageous, anti-oxygen approach to being our best selves, you know? Well, we have a few more minutes. What would you like to say to the world, Agnes? Well, I want to see you in Orlando, you know? And we will really, the Philippines, uh, I would also would like to, to thank our Vice President, Pichi Martinez. Congratulations. My team, you know. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And thank you all. Mm -hmm. Wait, I got to put up Pichi Martinez because she is, it's another one of those people that is always there for me across the ocean um, and is providing models for all of us in how to be financially successful. Because I can't stress enough, I can't stress enough that when you are living in a world of lack, your health is going to suffer. And I'm gonna repeat that. When you are living in a world of lack, your health is going to suffer. And honestly, I met people over the past week that have nothing, but they would never in a million years ever say they were poor or had nothing because they're living in abundance. I believe that being healthy and taking must natural, having enough antioxidants in my body has given me the strength to feel like there's nothing wrong in my life and I can conquer it because I've got my core health. So on that note, there's so many wonderful people on here tonight. Kino, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to get together for some meeting. We just, we're amazing. Kofi, we'll see you soon. We're going to get you started. I, I'm remiss in setting up a Zoom call for you with Mike. I promise I'll do that right after this call. And I'm going to turn my attention to Agnes. And man, yes. you in my life over the past month has been, it's like having a, a real champion who knows a whole lot. You're like Elba. Like you two, you're like my clinical like champions and personal champions. And that's what this business is about. It's about being healthier. It's about supporting each other. And in the end, it's feeling like a champion. Yes. Yes. Gigi, you're our champion. We miss you tonight. I know you're going to watch this. Mike, you are our champion. 
Kino, yeah. thank you for bringing me into the world of uh, Must Natural and Muscadine. And if I would have known you had that bottle in your room, I would have stolen it from you. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, everyone, thanks again. Uh, you want to take us out, Alba, like Vivi always does. Give us some words of wisdom and uh, some I'll end our broadcast. Words of wisdom. Be healthy in mind, body, spirit. Use what you can learn everywhere you can learn it to improve your health, your physical health, your financial health. And uh, we're here to support you. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. 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 Thank you all for being with us. Yes. Bye. 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 I can't shut us off. We have to broadcast.